So this video that Shai sent to me, it's more of a review video, video that um, a YouTuber uh, called Project Nightfall. Um, I really like his content and I admire him for his work, but the video that I just saw, it looks like a very filler video by him. Sorry, but it, it looks like, you know, when you don't have any content and you just have to, you know, make yourself uh, felt and you have to put you out there for people to know that you're still in the game, you have to keep posting. This video to me, I uh, feel like he is just trying to create an issue out of nothing. <laughs> well... All right, let's watch it together and then maybe I'll be able to explain uh, to you guys what exactly I mean by what I said. So, let's watch it. Okay, so why the hell she's beating the crap out of this effigy? It's got a good Night fam, sometimes people put me down because of my accent. Oh, I hear you. I totally agree. I have an accent too, and not a good one, I know. But this woman was put down because of her accent, gender, and race. Priyanka Chopra was bullied for being an Indian. She was 12 when she experienced racism firsthand, even before she understood its meaning. I didn't even understand race and the differences of that when I first came into America. The only thing she could hurt me with, which I couldn't change, was the color of my skin, right? She used to call me curry, she used to call me brownie, she used to say, go back to your country on the elephant you came on. And that bullying affected Priyanka's self-esteem. I had very low self-esteem. I was gawky as a teenager, I lived in America, I was made to feel conscious about the fact that I was Indian. I was very confused with who I was and what I was supposed to be. And for a 15-year-old, it became too much to handle. Wanting to end her suffering from being called names, eating in the bathroom alone and being attacked, she had no choice but to go back to India. And Dear Priyanka Chopra, <clears throat> I love this video. I feel like um, you always have something to, you know, whenever you think you your publicity is going down, you come up with a publicity stunt. Uh, this whole bullying thing, I kind of believe it, but I don't want to believe it, you know. The reason is that I understand coming from the same culture, I'm from Pakistan, and, you know, our parents are a lot more conservative than the Indian family or parents and whatnot. I'm married to an Indian now, so, I mean, I understand both cultures very well, and I do know that, yes, you may might be bullied when you were 12 and called you names and stuff, but that might be one person, and I'm sure, you know, um, whatever happened at that time, it was probably terrible. I have my sympathies with you. But then coming back um, and talking about it and pretending that when I was 12 I came to this country and I was bullied for three years so I left, um, I don't want to agree with that. I'm so sorry my dear but coming from a you know Pakistani Indian family, when you are 12 and 15 you don't make your own decision, let alone till you're married you're not making your own decision because you live with your parents and you kind of just you know um, adopt to that culture, adopt to that family. So I don't want to believe that you went back to India age of 15 because you were bullied. And yes, you may be bullied, but I don't want to believe that you went back. Most of the Indian parents, what they do is they send the kid back um, to learn the language or the culture, or if the kid is not behaving properly, then they just send their kids back to India and Pakistan to, you know, uh, what we, I don't know, call it. I, 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 I know uh, so many uh, South Asian families, both Indian and Pakistani, that decided to move back uh, because they found themselves misfit in the U.S. culture or they were not happy uh, the kind of uh, liberty their children were adapting and they just decided that, you know, they, the, the children upbringing, upbringing were not cultured and traditional enough for them and they were just losing control over their children so that's why they decided to move back but because of this reason, I never heard of that the first one, Priyanka, really. 
So coming from a South Asian, Pakistani or Indian family, as you all know that, you know, um, kids just cannot come to a different country when they're 12 and leave the country when they're 15. Um, there's two reasons. Either your parents have to go back, so you have to move back. Second, either most of the time South Asian parents send their kids back to the country so they can learn the culture and the language. That could be a second thing. Or the third thing could be that the child is being really, you know, not listening to the parents. The parents end up sending them back to their own countries because they think they can learn more culture and more uh, you know they can behave better in that country I don't want to believe the reason that you left the country because you know you were being bullied so for three years from age 12 to 15 and also as you all know that the South Asian parents are involved in your life till you're actually married or whatnot they control your life so anywho I totally agree. Um, coming from a South Asian family <laughs> if I had that kind of influence in my parent decision-making I wouldn't be here, <laughs> but no, um, they had mind of their own, and um, I just tagged along wherever they went. And uh, well, good on Priyanka if her parents uh, decided to move back uh, because of her bad experience in the United States of America. But if I would have told my parents something like that, I would get nothing but a but the thing is that uh, you came to U.S. pre-9-11 era when nobody knew the word racism. I mean, the kids, they do pick on each other. They do um, cat calls. They do call your name. They do bully you. They do. But naming it racism, that's not right. I mean, I think when I was growing up, I, never, I mean, I never heard this word. But now everyone knows what racism is. So many people practice racism. It's bad, but it's happening. But, you know, back in the time when you were growing up in U.S., whatever your experience was, it was definitely not racism. You, yeah, because you look different. People were kind of apprehensive approaching you, you know, dealing with you, you know, it, it dealing with someone that you don't know, that look different from you. So it's kind of awkward. But if you want to know what being bullied is, maybe you need to come see me. Because I think I've, I've been bullied when I was a kid. Um, I have a huge list of names that I was called, but again, I wouldn't call it racism. And um, well, again, if you want to know what racism is, what discriminating someone because of religion, because of culture that they follow, if you want to know that, maybe you should. So yeah, if you want to witness what racism is, then maybe you should visit any of the South Asian or developing countries. Why go farther? Go to Pakistan, maybe. Ra yeah, racism exists there. India, oh my God, don't even get me started. Bangladesh, several of every Arab countries. So it's not just about US. Racism is everywhere, right under our nose, within our own sleeve. So racism is us. Racism is within ourselves. We need to explore ourselves and get rid of it. Uh, if you want to know what the racism is, Priyanka, maybe you should visit Indian occupied Kashmir after Modi ji uh, left over a year long lockdown and only if he if and when he permit you to go there, you will know what the racism is. That's all I have to say. Bully thing. I personally think it's a publicity stunt because, um, uh, you know, when you don't have anything going on, you come up with something new all the time. I just can't wait for the next thing that you come up with to get more publicity. Anyway, so I don't want to believe. I mean, I to, let's hypothetically say for a moment, yes, you were bullied when you were 12 and you find the most ugliest picture from your childhood and post it on Instagram. Internet. I'm sure you have better pictures than that but hey let's give you the benefit of the doubt that you were bullied my sympathies with you and then probably the one kid who bullied you probably got 
suspended or maybe um you know detention or whatever your school did at that time i just don't want to believe that you left the country when you were 15 because you were bullied and you just couldn't take it for three years so you went back to India. the only thing she could hurt me with which i couldn't change was the color of my skin right she used to call me curry she used to call me brownie she said kali well that's cute well being called kali kali kaloti that's not bully i mean i've been called kali kaloti all my life uh, while growing up you know when you are in your teenager I mean, you look ugly regardless what your skin tone is. You know, you have bad skin, acne, you know, so many things going on, hormone-wise, psychological issues, uh, physical development. So yeah, most of the teenagers look ugly. And especially when, when you are in a foreign country and you look different uh, from what the majority looks like, people would talk about it. I mean, they would call your name. And being attacked, she had no choice but to go back to India. And there she dedicated most of her time into gaining confidence. Confidence is something I've taught myself over the years. I, I started becoming okay with who I am. I became the best version of me. And true enough, because of her newly gained confidence, Bianca became Miss World at an early age of 18. The fact that my personality and the way I speak and my confidence is what won me that crown made me feel like confidence is your best accessory. There is nothing else you need. The only thing you need to wear well is your confidence. Being crowned as Miss World gave her an opportunity to become a Bollywood actress. But this so-called opportunity made her feel less again. And this time it wasn't about her accent or her ethnicity. This time it was about her being a woman. A producer director for example telling me that if I didn't agree to the ridiculous terms or painfully low salary in his movie that he would just replace Replace me because girls are replaceable in the entertainment business. Priyanka's hard earned confidence was being tested, but made me decide to make myself irreplaceable. After many years of teaching herself how to be confident, she mastered the Second art. The thing is that you're bashing the Indian industry where you started your career from. Instead of giving them the credit, I mean, I'm so sorry you were not able to, you know, become very famous and whatnot, but. Um, now don't blame it on the directors. Yes, there are some bad ones. I agree with you on that as well um, But there are some good ones too. So you cannot say that every director in India were like, you know uh, trying to uh, Tell you that you're a girl and a bay and all that stuff That is like it's a cultural it's a cultural thing. I don't think it's an Indian thing I don't think it's a Pakistani thing. I don't think it's South Asian thing. So don't put Indian uh, me, uh, what you call it, the movie industry down on that, saying that the reason you left. Come on, Priyanka, bashing your own industry, that gave you the name, that gave you the position where you're at right now. It, this is not right. I mean, when you started off um, in Bollywood, you were a strong woman. You had won the beauty pageant of Miss India and then Miss World, I believe, too. So you were right there. So you had totally command on what to accept and what to refuse. But despite all this, you still went ahead and worked in that industry, did compromises, what now you're complaining about but that was your own choice just so many other actresses who have no choice they have to stay in the, in the industry because this is the only work they know and um, they have to support themselves they have to support their family and i'm not a big fan of me too movement but this movement movement is the only thing that kind of um, gave them courage to come forward and um, speak up, um, take a stand for themselves, but you, I mean, if you had any issue with director, producer, finance, why you had to wait all this time and say it now when you're not even working in Bollywood. Yeah. Other female actresses who went through the same ordeal that you did, 
I wouldn't call call it an ordeal for you, but definitely it, it this is an ordeal for them because they had no choice. This is the only thing they had to do to support their family. You came from a very, uh, I would say, well-to-do family background financially, if not wealthy, but definitely your parents were, you know, quite well-to-do. Your father, as far as I know, was a doctor practicing in U.S. Um, your mother was, I don't know if she was a housewife, but she was an educated uh, woman too. So you came from a very uh, financially stable um, household. So money wasn't an issue for you. So whatever compromises you made in Bollywood industry, that was your own choice. So now you're working um, in American film industry. Good on you. But don't forget that you are here because of Bollywood, because the project that you did in um, India and the beauty pageant that you won being an Indian. So my final thoughts are that if you had spoken up when you had entered the Bollywood industry after winning two beauty pageants and being a leading actress in several mainstream big Bollywood movies, then it would have benefited you and the several other movie actresses who had to wait for this two movement to come out and stand the ground for themselves. It's a little too late. The thing is that you talked about the Indian producers and pictures and how you were used and you were told that, you know, um, you are not good enough and X, Y, Z, whatnot. I'm so sorry, dear. If you did not make it in the Indian industry, let's not talk shit about it. Yes, you were famous, but maybe you just not make it to the elite um, artist and whatnot. And you try your luck in America and in Hollywood and you lucked out. So good for you. I'm more power to you. I'm very happy for you. And now that you have made a white guy, we're hoping that you'll have non-kale, non-brown white kids very soon. Good luck.